Welcome. In this video, we will present a brief overview of nystagmus for patients and families. Nystagmus is a kind of abnormal eye movement that is involuntary, rhythmic, and in a to-and-fro fashion, sometimes appearing as a shake of the eyes. The movement can be either horizontal, vertical, torsional, or a combination of these directions with variable amplitude and frequency, and can be worsened or improved by gaze position, fixation, or covering one eye. In terms of its epidemiology, in the general population, nystagmus can be observed in about 24 per every 10,000 people, with a slight predilection towards people of European ancestry. In children, the incidence is slightly lower at about 17 per every 10,000 children. There is also a lower proportion of acquired nystagmus compared to adults, which is defined as any nystagmus presenting at or after the age of six months. The causes of nystagmus can be divided into three broad categories, physiologic, congenital, or acquired. Physiologic nystagmus is when the eye movement is a normal response to a stimulus in our surroundings, such as when we're spinning around or looking at moving objects, a phenomenon also known as the optokinetic reflex. Congenital nystagmus is when the nystagmus occurs from birth and is usually discovered by the time a child is a few months old while acquired nystagmus occurs after the age of six months. Some causes of acquired nystagmus include disease of the central nervous system, disease of the vestibular system, as well as toxicity from drug or metabolic conditions. Here is an example of normal physiologic nystagmus that can occur when we stare at certain moving or spinning objects. In the video, the eye movement observed is the optokinetic reflex of a child looking at a fan. When evaluating a patient with nystagmus, an important decision is whether or not additional workup such as imaging is needed. As acquired nystagmus are usually associated with serious underlying causes, all forms of presumed acquired nystagmus need further diagnostic workup to determine the underlying cause. This is especially true when the nystagmus is asymmetric or if other neurological signs or symptoms are present. A few types of nystagmus do not require imaging as they're usually benign with no underlying disease. These include infantile nystagmus syndrome, inherited forms of nystagmus, nystagmus caused by blindness or low vision, and latent nystagmus. This is an example of latent nystagmus, which is a horizontal nystagmus that is only observed after covering one eye. The direction of the nystagmus is towards the uncovered eye, which means that the direction changes depending on which eye is covered. This is a benign condition that usually does not require further workup. Treatment options for nystagmus can vary from observation to surgery, depending on the nature and cause of the nystagmus. Nystagmus associated with amblyopia can also be improved with traditional amblyopia therapy. Glasses can optimize vision and improve visual acuity by correcting refractive errors, which can be high in patients with nystagmus. Glasses can also be used to make the eyes converge more. This is helpful in cases where the nystagmus dampens with convergence, such as in infantile nystagmus syndrome. In addition to glasses, prisms may also be used to shift a severe head posture or to help dampen nystagmus. The use of base-out prisms to induce convergence can help some patients whose nystagmus diminishes with convergence. Some medications such as gabapentin and memantine have been shown to be effective for treating congenital nystagmus in adult patients. However, none of these medications have been studied in children. Eye muscle surgery is mostly for treating infantile nystagmus. It essentially acts the same way as prisms to help shift a significant head posture by altering the position of the eyes. In summary, in this video, we provided an overview of nystagmus, which is a rhythmic abnormal eye movement. We discussed its causes, which can either be physiologic, congenital, or acquired. We talked about the decision to pursue imaging, as well as some treatment options for nystagmus. 
For additional material on common pediatric eye conditions, please visit our Pediatric Ophthalmology and Strabismus online library through our YouTube channel or the Johns Hopkins website. Thank you so much for your attention.